let's start with the Terrigen 4 to creating scenery. And before I'm going to explain what is all of these things do, I think it's a very interesting just to create our first scenery. Many things, maybe what I'm going to do, you not yet um, will be understand how it's work or how they will link together, which is okay. This is mostly like a very simple um, terrain, a very simple scene we're going to create, but it's give you kind of idea what is all about. And if you need it, you always can go back, rewatch this video over and over again as you need it. And keep in mind, all of these properties and everything we will address later as we're going in details. So first, we have these applications and we just intend to create something. Let's do this. By the way, right here, what we have at preview, this is all by default. So if we're creating open Terrigen by default, we will have it our scenery. And you'll notice on the middle, it's like open plateau. So let me see what's happening. If we look in our nodes, and remember how I said that nodes is very important. You'll notice right here, we have a simple shader that connect to our fractal terrain. Notice on the middle, we have this open plateau. So let's go ahead and kind of just maybe try to zoom out as much as we can, okay? We, we zoom out that much. There you go. You'll notice on the middle, maybe too much. There you go. Okay. On the middle, we have this area, the flat area that is easy to set up. And it's what's happening. All of this terrain, it's a fractal generated terrain. So it is all unique. It's using random generated nodes to create this. And the simple shader, which is, if we look on the properties, we can see it is have a scale and it is about this size make flat, but notice it is connecting to our fractal terrain. So it's tell this area location, it is making flat. So what's happening if I disconnect? If I disconnect, you can see the flat area right here, it's a disappear. So we remove it, some of this area from our masking. Okay, don't worry too much about what is masking and everything. If you're not familiar, we'll go over this stuff. So just keep in mind, overall, you'll notice nodes as we connecting, they will keep it going. So let's go ahead and connect it back so we'll have our system open here. And what I want to do, I want to create a lake scenery. And for the lake, I want to make crater on the middle. So let's go ahead to our terrain selected where we have add terrain. And we're going ahead and click on Add Terrain and select Displacement Shader because we need Displace. And we'll go click on a Crater. So we'll just add a Crater right here. Notice where it's positioning Crater, position just below. And you can notice, look right here, we already have it, our Crater made for us, which is kind of very cool. So let's go ahead, zoom closer. And you'll notice what we have right here. It is. We have it, our terrain on a background. This is our shader, fractal terrain right here. We have it, our simple flat right on the middle right here. And we also have it just below here, crater shader, which is located on a top. Notice how the flow is going, okay? We can change some of those nodes and we'll do this later, but for now, just let's keep it as a default, it's a settings. So some properties of this crater we can modify. So if you look on a crater shaders, you have how deep it is. And if, for example, if we want to very deep lake, let's go at 500 and you can see how instantly it's become deeper lake. You know what? I don't think I want this deep, so I will give it 100. The diameter it's 1000 meters. We can just keep it as 1000 for now, same size. So let's go ahead and look what else we have. And because it's a crater, crater have it properties, rim, skirt, it's softness. So let's go ahead and take skirt and reducing to 500. And you can see it will make a little bit softer embedded, which maybe work better for us. So let's go ahead and even set 20. And you can see how it's a little bit edge become a little bit softer. So we'll look on some of these properties a little bit later, how they work. Let's go ahead and rim height, which is like round. 
Actually, I want to put it zero because I don't want any rim. I want very smooth transitions into the water. Okay, we have it also rip softness. We can put it this one, make it very soft edges. All what I do is just make like a little bit hole around there. Actually, yeah, I did it zero. There you go. Okay, and also toughness. Let's go increase. Then we'll just shoot a little bit, spread a little bit more out. Because sometimes some properties, it's very hard. The best things about this, you can always just type in number and you can see what has come up. Because you have a real time preview render, this is kind of very, very nice options to do this. Let's go ahead with a two. And I think this is look very good. Okay. So we created our element. But you know what? I want to maybe put it rocks around this area. For creating rocks, we're going to use it another displacement. And the same in terrain, we'll go click add terrain. By the way, you don't if you don't want it, you don't need to click on add terrain. You can just go right here, cl right click, and go select to our shaders because you remember what we use it, displacement shader and select from this area. But for now, I'm just going to select from terrain so you kind of keep it. Uh, idea which is where they're located. So we'll go displacement as we did before and we'll select the fake stones. So let's go ahead and you can see fake stones just put it just under our crater. Um, here come up a little bit problem with this because I wanted fake stones be before crater. So let's do this way. Let's change our lines. We select this right here. Okay. And we'll select this one there, we'll just redirect all what we've done. We took it, our fake stones, and we put them before crater. What is help? It will make these fake stones put it everywhere, including the crater. Otherwise, if it's flow, it will put just in one place. So right here, if we look closer, you can see some of those fake stones start appearing like a little bit uh, elements you can see right here teeny tiny so if you want be sure they look bigger let's increase scale of the fake stones and now you can see them quite a bit large size you remember how we said before if you um the masking and other elements you can try to play around with the even masking for example if i'm going and surface shader right here was a mask shader so you can actually go and play around see we cannot do this we need to put this below but we can also use it as a shape for our crater to shape out and um, mask rocks from the water however i want these rocks be everywhere so i'll just leave it there as well well the one thing i maybe want for these rocks i maybe want a little bit more of them so we'll go ahead and be sure the fake stone selected. By the way, right here in preview windows, you can see those dots is where the rocks were selected. Now we want to um, change stone scale. We could make variable scales, but for this, we need to draw more with the function and we want to look on this right now. So we'll just go with simplicity. I'm going to set maybe to five, so not as big rocks because I want preview, but I don't want them that large, five meters. And the density, you know, let's go pop up to maybe 0 0.5. So we have it quite a bit dense on the rocks. You also can type in, or you can use the slider if you need it. Slide one, which is actually, I think it will be just all rocky land. No, maybe we'll do that. Yes. Let's go actually just a little bit below, drop about maybe 0 0.8 around this area. Okay, we have it also variable density and currently it's a randomizing, which is kind of very good. We have our density seed another. So we'll look on this a little bit later. We don't have it any mask right now because we have it everywhere. So I think it's kind of nice going. We could also modify just to preview color if we need it for this. Even it's not shader, but we can still work around in this case. And let's go, you know, just select something like sandy kind of darker okay if we click change colors you'll notice colors does not change in our preview because we not enable the material preview 
this is not yet mentioned before but on the top right here when you get or go over option and you see it says enable or disable shaders let's check this okay and if we check you can notice that it will change what will display it of course some coloring not applied because we have it kind of overwhelmed with the basic color so it is a little bit overriding some of the colors so if we go on the base colors and open property Notice I open two properties at the same time, which is kind of very cool because you can open multiple properties and work this way. And right here, if we're going inside the colors, notice it's black and gray. This is what overrided our colors. We could actually take um, our fake stones and going to the mask of our colors. Then we'll say whatever is a color of our stone, mask this so there won't be masked they won't be everywhere but because our density is so high it will be everywhere so we'll just take for example our fake stones let's go scale and we take like density reduce quite a bit lower okay where's my right here my rubber so if we're going down you'll notice how it will change you can see how the blending has happened and where's the coloring well okay let's go back and you know what sometimes when i work with the Honestly, with Terrigen, I get it so much sidetrack because it's just so cool to experiment. And because you have this live preview, you can do just fast and easy. I mean, it is a great, great tool to just create your rates. So I'm disabled for now. We'll leave it base color when we come back. But just let me show you, this is how flow going and how you can control. So experiment with this a little bit with the connection, see what you like it. Okay, at this point, let's disable our shader and usually I enable disable them so for the faster render time or preview the next what we want to do it's add some the water to this but here's the problem is because this is a lake way above if we're going inside our water and we're going to add a lake okay let's look what's happening let's look it went way out of you see right here far away I don't want far away the water i just want on a middle what has helped to me it set this maximum radius right now it is 100 000, so we can always take and reduce the lake size notice as i'm changing it is shrinking down in this case i can change the position just inside of my lake so if i look way far away okay so let's go ahead zoom out you can see this circle it's representing where the water will locate it which is kind of very cool and again if i don't i think right here maybe spawn too much we can even shrink a little bit more down just to be sure we cover only this area this is very helpful when you start working with kind of like limited um, adjustments i mean with some water elements that you kind of want to preview okay there you go and so far it was very easy we just read rocks we add water and if water again is too tall remember we can change water level so we can just a little bit decreasing oh too much right here let's go to set this is a zero and maybe i want minus 0 0.9 okay so let's go bring down there you go this is a little bit better Okay, we have an edge we have a beautiful setup okay let's position and by the way just play around with a little bit of your navigation so you can feel comfortable um you always can change and we'll look after when in the properties how you can change this but for now just adjust we'll put it like right there there you go and look what we have up front we have this box white box right there if we're selecting this is actually our camera. So we'll go click on a camera stub and you can see the camera right here. If we render right now at this point, we will render from position of the camera. But I like ways right now located. So to copy our camera position to current viewpoint, we'll just need to go down to the bottom on our view, this icon kind of bottom left it says copy view to current render camera settings. So let's press 
You see, camera disappearing now because it's moved and it's set to this point where I'm viewing from. Okay, let's go ahead next and we'll do a couple more things here. Um, overall, before we jump to our elements, let's see in going object tab. And I'm missing some grass, okay? So let's see what we have it. We click on the add object and we'll go to populate object. And let's go populate with a grass clump. So we go click on this. You'll notice, okay, let's go right here what we have. We have it our planet and like below, we have it our grass clump. It does not connect to anything, but it is well located on the surface of our planet. If we select in grass clump, we have it some properties we can look. This is number of the blades, how many we can, diameter and diameter also. If we go look, okay, let me reposition. You can see right here yellow circle. This is also represent. Remember, like with the water, represent diameter. So this is representing where the grass will located, because we don't want to populate every everywhere. And if we populate everywhere, it take a lot of memory, a lot of polygons. So we don't want to do this. Yeah. Okay. So as it's selected, we can come closer now. Uh, let's go right here. Reposition, and I want to be sure. I utilize the best out of this grass. So right here, you know, maybe even closer to the ground, like right there. Then I'm gonna see lake. Hmm, that is your personal choice how you like to position, but I think this way maybe work better. There you go. So we set up. Okay, let's go right now and click on preview. We'll go right there, click on materials. And as we're going closer to rocks, you can see how beautiful rocks will come. Okay, it's look, but not enough. We need add more grass. So grass clump selected, diameter blade, number of the objects. So let's go ahead and add two more zeros. We're going crazy, okay? And this is, should add quite a bit dense population as well. A link right now it's 10 centimeters. So we'll go big with a one meter. Okay, quite a bit tall. So it should be populated quite a bit on all these different areas. Okay, the same things we can take different objects and populate with the trees or other things. But for now, that should work for us. Okay, I think we have it grass around. We have it grass on the rocks. And it is not very advanced. Honestly, it is not very advanced system how we set it. Because if you look on a grass clamps, it will populate it through the rocks and other things. Then we'll look a little bit more in the next videos, advanced when we're going over masking, how we can set up so the grass only growing around the rocks, not through the rocks. But this is the, for the future, okay? So right now we just post it there. Let's go now in atmosphere tab and let's see what we have it. By default, we have a very beautiful atmosphere. We could take and select our sun position that we'll do in a second, but I think we want to add clouds. So let's go ahead add cloud later. And by the way, in the new version of Terrigen, they add a bunch of new clouds, which are very realistic, awesome. And I'm skipping ahead to let you know, you actually can painting clouds on the sky. You can use the pen tool and actually painting whatever clouds you want. This is awesome things. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll go level uh, low. Let's go like maybe medium. We'll just select this. And by default, we'll add easy clouds and you can see the layer will be placing around there, which is kind of OK. I think we'll leave it and right there, take a few seconds till it's a render. And here we have it preview our beautiful clouds. Um, notice it is still generating. So right here it's finished. Little bit kind of uh, blocky, but it is the quality of resolution. We don't want to spend a lot of time on the previews. So that is look very good. I think maybe a sun position. So let's go ahead and click on the lighting and we have it our environmental light and we have it our sunlight. And in sunlight properties, what we're looking at is elevation and heading. So if we look on a heading, we can go and adjust the sun. So it's kind of positioned a little bit more towards us. But um, with sun position, it's kind of you need a view on this because, okay, let me disable those two materials in the atmosphere so we can preview. But uh, the light position is kind of where you're going. And right here, you see the dot. If we look on top 
right, uh, top, top left, right here, you see the small yellow dot. Okay, watch, watch what's happening when I go rotate and I can position where I want it. And it's kind of helped me because if I put it right there, I know sun will be up front, right around there. And if I take my elevation and drop down elevation, you can now see the sun appearing this as a point around here. So then we can create a beautiful stunning scenery and it does help. Okay, let's rotate just slightly a little bit more around there, maybe a little bit more. And we'll create a little bit lower sun, create this um, golden hour kind of view. So in this way, we set up our sun. And usually what I do, I look on these shadows because this is, again, a, two, a 3D and 2D representation. It's abstract. The only shapes we can determine is by the luminosity level or shadows and highlights. It's how we represent the shapes. Um, and position of the sun will give it us this perspective of the shadows that will create effect like how deep it is or how tall. And so we kind of can look. Position the sun in a golden hour a little bit below, give it almost like perfect shadows for us so we can recognize the objects much easier. You can always experiment with this. For example, if you take a sun and you put a total up front and let's do this. So we'll go, you'll see this dot rotating and we'll just put this right up front right here and let's raise up slightly elevation you'll notice because the light will go straight forward it will be shadows hiding behind it will create quite a bit flat look for us okay let me go re-enable all this position all other elements okay and you can see beside the shadows of the clouds on this look how rock look much flatter before, when we have it on the sun, if you remember, the rocks have a deeper shadows, look a little bit more rocky. <laughs> and right now, because from front, all lights is flattened, this, and the reason is why I like to actually go and set up my lights a little bit on the sideways, uh, maybe around right here. You can play around and sun just a little bit lower. So that way we'll have it like perfect shadows creating and we can easily recognize all 3D objects in two-dimensional representation. Okay, next what we're going to do, it's work a little bit on our materials. And remember before we have it right here, we have our colors. We'll go ahead, open our properties and you can right click, select settings or you can just double time click. We'll open properties for this and we'll go to the colors. And remember we have these two colors. So it's representing different between darker gray, the black and kind of grayish. So I'm going to switch this to a little bit warmer color, sandy. So this is our lightest point and our darkest point. I don't necessarily like when it's like all the way black. So we'll switch and this is give it us a uh, difference between lights and high colors. You of course can make a little bit lighter by adjusting and this is adjust luminosity level. Over, but it kind of cool. It's creating all this view by combining and work with all these different type of the colors. We actually can create a different between uh, sand mountains look. Okay, so let me show you as example right here. I have a base color, and we can copy Control C or Command C, Control V, Command V. You also cool things. You can just copy paste notes that you like it. And they copy with the previous properties as well. So, okay, so we copy here, and let's right now take this color. We connecting as a node, and we'll connect from here to our planet. So we're going from one to another. You should see no difference, however, because our our colors the same. However, if we change this color, and we'll switch from brown maybe you know let's go to something like more the other color i think this one will work good okay you can see how it will change color here as well now we don't have this brown color but it does not really do for us anything because one override another one so we need to change something and let's do with a mask remember right here the middle point and by middle point i mean we have okay let's go disable our atmospheric but i want to leave it my 
materials up. So if we look up, okay, right here, let's go wee, zoom out. This middle point, it is this our node, this simple node, it's this huge circle. So what I want to do, I want inside be brown, but outside mountains a little bit gray. So I'm taking from this point output, drag and go connect to the mask. So as I'm connecting, not so what's happening. Now this behind become our reddish, but inside not so saturated. It's not necessarily what I wanted. I want actually inverse. So for this, I open properties and right here where it says mask by shader, let's click on invert mask. As I'm done this, you'll notice right here inside now, I have it brown and behind, I have this gray. It's precisely what I wanted. We can go again more complex with this in the future when we start working with mask. We can also separate single rocks. We can apply all this texture. So it's it kind of a lot of fun we can do with this. But generally, this is what we're going here to set up. Okay, now let's go back to our preview. And I think at this point, I'm almost set. Okay. Let's go right here. And you know what? Sometimes we can go to um, select and let's go to preview mode. So we don't have any preview on this case. But let me go down below, click on preview and we'll go to camera preview. So we know what is our camera. See, and I think it's look actually very good at this point. Of course, we can play more by adding more grass and everything, but we already run a little bit too long on our time. And for the first project, just to play around hands on with the simple nodes and everything, I think it's good enough. Okay, let's go ahead now. We have our camera already set. We'll go to our renders and then renders where we're going to set up what we want to see. And we'll look our image with, and notice right here, we have it our render and we, <laughs> we have it our render camera and we have it our renders. You can have it more than just one render inside the Turgeon stop. And you can have it from one camera to render multiple renders, which is kind of very cool, I think. But right here we have it our setup render and we're going 800 for, um, by 450. Okay, we'll just leave it everything as default. So we won't go too much in all those details. And I'm just going to click right here on the render, open the render window. So let's go ahead click open and you can see our preview and all what I need to do, just click on the render. As you render, you'll notice it is creating this small um, sampling bucket. So it's how render engine works. Sometimes very cool just to see how it's working. And as a render I'm going, I also like to check sometimes on the settings, how much it's utilizing. And overall, actually it does not utilize too much of the GPU, which I need to look on optimization. As well, it does not take that much memory. So it's take only 3, 000, uh, 3 gigabyte of the VRAM. And you know what? It does not utilize too much. Utilization 36%. So 58. I maybe need to go check so I can pop up and utilize all video card. Okay. Oh, we're almost done. You know what? Even right here, I see, I don't think I have enough grass. You know, it's like people said, not enough cowbells. So I think we need it change a little bit view here. Okay. And that's one reason why we're rendering so we can preview. Also, I don't really like this all around around kind of shape. Okay. So right here, render is done. And I think that our problem is that I create too many rocks and they're too large and grass too small. Not enough. So let's go do this way. We'll take our view and we'll just bring a little bit closer. Okay to the ground, like right here. Okay, just right there around. So we can see the lake. Now maybe let's go closer to the lake. There you go. As we're going to the closer lake, I'm going to copy this new position for the camera. Okay, we'll just go, uh, let's uncheck this too. So it will go a little bit faster. Okay, we'll go now adjusting. And uh, Remember, let's look on our grass. 
this is what's happening usually you create your render one time and after you see oh it does not look right this or this so i need to modify and that's what we're doing right here we render we find what does not look good but we want to make it sure it's look good so we can adjust those properties properly and we'll do this with accessing with the nodes one thing remember we have right here our rocks color and i look and does not necessarily look as i want it so you know what Let's go even actually make kind of more grassy look maybe instead. So we go inside, we'll select and we'll create a little bit more grass alike. Okay. Next, we'll go back to our fake stone right here. And you know what? I think there was very big. If we look, look on a, a double time click, open properties of our stone. And if we look, it's a very large scale so let's go to decrease make them much smaller okay and let's decrease density of the rocks so that will help us to create a little bit nicer we also can go look on the rock property and you know what let's make them less saturated kind of a more grayish color okay let's go ahead we'll close this one and remember what that says about um, base color as well so we can also go in and masking this if we need it so we can go and select mask for specific colors here and we also need to invert that mask same like what we did before so in this case it's help us to distinguish with the colors on the rocks okay now let's just condense this rocks a little bit so if we click on a fake rock you can see location for this we can change this as well. Let's go to our terrain. And right here, fake stock, uh, fake stone. We can also change properties on this. Like for example, in a sh uh, shapes, we can see the tallness and pancake effect. Pancake, it's kind of like squeeze, you know, effect. So um, tallness, let's go 0 0.2. We don't want too tall. Okay, color, we kind of, preset this color a little bit already so we'll just leave it as default i think that will look okay here okay let's go now um crater shape because it's a very roundy effect so we can squeeze or we can play around a little bit more with this but we also can work a little bit with a rim and the rim is you can notice we can drawing look right here if it's have it property we can connect something so let's just connect something else there and we can play with this by connecting different things for example you can even take the terrain and just try connect and see how much it's changed rim and you can see right here it's already a little bit changing so you can play around with the different shapes different stuff and see how it will work with you uh if you like it or not um thoughtness i think is okay softness let's go to zero point three we'll just adjust a little bit on this effect so it will create a little bit nicer shape for us play around with these connections see which one you prefer better but general it will work this and you know what let's go next and we'll go to objects and we'll go to grass clamp so we want to work with the grass look how much it is populated grass but again if we're selecting our grass here it is all over places. I don't necessarily want on a bag because we won't see it. I want kind of bring closer. So let's go ahead and we'll take diameter and we can reduce slightly. Actually, you know what? Let's create maybe around there. Okay. And let's go see where it's actually located. I think it's located in total wrong place. So let me go ahead. For now, I'll just set blade to 1000 okay and we'll go right click on the middle and we'll go select object and we'll go to grass clamp so right here we select our grass okay at this point moment we can also just go and see errors we can move it so i'm going to move this up front of the camera okay, because i think this is actually teeny tiny that's why we cannot see it at all and we'll just go to Okay, let's go adjust right here and look on this it's teeny tiny no wonder we don't see our grass there okay so let's increase size 
and we'll just increase right here up front of our camera. So let's go ahead. I'm just adjusting it. maybe right there. Okay. Next, let's go to select our scale property. We'll just click and we can scale increase right here and let's scale this way. There you go. So now this is a little bit better, I think. Now we can bring this closer. And you know what? Let's go select our camera. Hmm, grass need become closer, I think. So let's go select preview. Where's my camera? Right here. Yeah, I need to bring closer, definitely this. Okay, so we'll take this one, bring a little bit closer to the camera. Again, so we'll select two size and we'll expand. There you go. I think that will look much, much better. So now a little bit better camera view. Okay, there you go. We have it, our grass. And now I can select the blades and we'll just go crazy on our blades. So it will should have it plenty of the grass because at first I'm like lost with our grass because it was teeny tiny on middle of the water. We definitely we cannot see it at all. Okay, and we'll ready to actually take uh, bring a little bit down maybe. Yeah, I can see the grass right there. Okay, so we'll just place it like this, you know, right there. There you go. I think this is about good position now. So we have a nice, beautiful green. Remember, we want to take and copy this position to our camera because we just reposition, create brand new. Okay, number of blades is good. I think blade length about one meter. That should be good enough. And we can try to render again. So let's go ahead. We'll click on the render button. We'll have it our previous and let's click render again. And as a render keep on going, I look on my grass and I realize I'm going crazy with this grass. Okay. So what are we going to do? We'll stop. Okay. And I'm going to rework a little bit on this grass. So I don't need that many. So let's drop down. Okay. Let's drop diameter a little bit of the clamps and I will drop link. So I won't be that crazy at all. Now on the surface shader, let's go to enable my preview color because I want to see, you know, where's location for this. So this is will help me to kind of create preview on this. Okay, individual, all that's good. Okay, let's go click on render and back to the grass clamps. You know, I don't see the grass clamps right here. Hmm, let's try to pop up a little bit higher. We saw some effect, but I think maybe we have a couple funny things going on there. Okay, let's go click. Okay, so let's go change actual preview color. I don't need it. We'll go to the texture selected. Let's go number of the blades. We'll go probably about hundred thousand uh, diameter five clamps five meters and blade length ten centimeters. So we'll go a little bit higher. I think that should work very good okay again we'll put it around here we can push it a little bit out maybe in the water but i think that will should work very well okay um let's go look on our rocks also one thing what i was thinking they were about our rocks and we'll go fake rocks right here let's open the properties and we'll go to shape and tallness 0 0.3 let's make them just a little bit taller we don't care about pancake effect. I think that is good. And let's go ahead and start rendering. So I'm going to bring right here our menu, the preview. Okay, and again, I see the problem right here. For some reason, those clamps just does not come very well. I think I still have the same problem right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and make it smaller. And this is what's happening. Sometimes you render, it just does not look right. So I want to be sure it just not overwhelm them. Okay, so that look much better. I think it's just dense. It was a little bit going too crazy right here. I can see the grass clamps between the rocks. We still 
kind of a little bit above. Remember, we're not like um, close to the ground with our camera, so we see small ones, but previews look nice. We have big rocks. Okay, I think that is a very nice beginning just to play around, see what we can do. And the most important is give it us kind of first look hands on how the application work or what we set up. And you know what is interesting part as we're progressing, you'll see a huge difference in what we're going to render and how realistic it will start looking, how much stuff we can process there. Okay, so at this point, I think it is a nice try, but let's actually see now in the properties. Let's go more closer to different elements and see how they all work together. Most of our videos will be project based, so we'll have it like create a different planets, create the different things, uh, how we can achieve more realism with the plants, with the edge of the water example, transparency and other ones. So we'll have it more project based videos, but we are going to over all of these workflows. We'll work with terrain, shaders, water, atmosphere, lighting with a camera render different perspective. We even look on the 3D and we are rendering as well in this. So hopefully you will enjoy it and uh, let me know if you have any questions or any other um, specific elements you want to know. And meanwhile, till you're waiting maybe for new videos out, be sure to check out the previous releases of the Terragen. Um, I have over 100, 100 videos related to Terragen. Um, they're a little bit older version, but they, again, they'll give you a lot of interest and inspiration. At least look what we're doing. And anyway, we will continue to working on our new versions and see what is actually new in this and new release of Terragen. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.